Before we jump into today's show here on Chicago Bears Now, do me a favor, give me a follow on Instagram if you haven't already. We're less than 100 followers away from 2,500 on IG. I promised you guys I would do another Instagram Live once we cross 2,500 followers. So you see my handle right there below, at HGramNFL. It's at HGramNFL. Give me a follow on Instagram, and once we uh, cross 2,500, we'll do a brand new IG Live shortly after that. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. Today's episode of Chicago Bears Now is salary cap cut candidates. Five players the Bears could release to clear out some cap space. Let's kind of take a look at where the Bears sit right now with the offseason upon us. Bears roughly have $30 million in cap space as we sit right now. Only five draft picks, no first-round pick, no fourth-round pick, no seventh-round pick, only five in total. Uh, free agency starts on March 16th. And the NFL draft is April 28th through the 30th. So, look, I mean, it's getting here, man. Like, we're almost into the month of March here, and Ryan Poles and company uh, have to figure out how to navigate the cap and how to improve this football team. Got a couple of weeks to get things in order. All right, before we get to those cap cut candidates, what's the first big move the Bears will make this offseason? Maybe you think they're going to – you know, trade a player. Maybe you think they're going to, uh, you know, re-sign James Daniels or something like that. Maybe you think they're going to cut somebody, which, again, we'll get to five players they could cut today. First big move the Bears will make this offseason. Predict it for us in the comments. All right, let's get to those cap cut candidates. Eddie Goldman is first up here, the defensive tackle, really the nose tackle, who uh, obviously sat out 2020, uh, came back last year, and, you know, didn't do much, if we're being completely honest. Now, you look at the cap savings here based on when you do it. If they cut them before June 1st, which is probably when it would happen in Goldman's case, uh, save $6.66 million. Oh, that's a number no one likes to see. Uh, Post-June 1st, if they waited until after June 1st to cut them or designated him a post-June 1 cut, you'd save almost $8.9 million. But the reason post-June 1st cuts don't happen that often is that money doesn't free up for you until June 1st. Uh, so, you know, free agency is mostly done by then. The draft is done. Now, a lot of post-June 1 cuts, uh, once those come through, then you'll sign your draft class officially. So you could go that route, and then that money pays for your rookie draft class. But I think in Goldman's case, you'd want that money sooner rather than later. Take the over $6.5 million. Uh, look, he came back and, you know, didn't do much. There's questions if he loves football at this point. You know, hey, if you don't love football anymore, that, I'm not going to knock you for it, but, you know, maybe it's time to retire, right? Uh, Eddie Goldman uh, didn't seem that engaged this year. I can't imagine he's back. New regime, coming off a poor year. Uh, you know, he's a rotation player at this point, making a lot of money. I just I don't think he's a part of this team moving forward, uh, and I think uh, that he's a prime uh, cap-cut candidate in the very near future. I think he could get cut in the next couple of weeks before free agency gets started. Will Eddie Goldman be back next season? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I don't think he's back, and uh, quite frankly, I'd be surprised if there were a lot of yeses in there. So get your votes in. Will Eddie Goldman be back in 2022? Next up is Tariq Cohen. And, you know, sentimentally, I would like to see Cohen back. I like him. I think he's a leader on this team. I think when he's healthy, he's a productive player. The problem is, you know, he just hasn't played much. You look at how much you could save. If you do cut him pre-June 1st, two and a quarter million, post-June 1st, four million. So, you know, a somewhat notable difference there. Uh, you know, he hasn't almost played in almost two years, which which is unfortunate for him. It's unfortunate for the Bears. And, you know, when guys like this, when you bring in a new regime, a new GM, a new coach, you know, A, they may not have plans for certain players anyway. And B, when you're a guy that's been hurt and hadn't played in almost two years, that's a tough sell to a new regime. Like, hey, like you can trust me. You can rely on me to be a productive player in this offense. I wish that were the case. I would love nothing more for Tariq Cohen to come back, be healthy, you know, catch some passes out of the backfield, line up in the slot a little bit, be a return specialist. But what heavens do we have that that's going to happen? He's not confident in his body He and his recovery. He flat out admitted that. So I think that's going to be that's going to be tough for him to try and stay on this team moving forward. More cut candidates to get to, but hey, help us out. 43,000 subs is almost here. If you want more Chicago Bears news and rumors on a daily basis, subscribe. Let's keep this channel growing throughout the offseason. And uh, hey, free agency just around the corner, draft coming up as well. No one's going to have it covered better than we will. And it's free to subscribe, unlike a lot of those paid websites. YouTube.com slash Bears now. All you got to do is hit that big red button. 
Let's go to Nick Foles, and uh, producer Jack is booing me because uh, he loves Nick Foles, having grown up in Arizona, which is where Foles went to college. Uh, I'd like to trade him because uh, you save more money by trading him, but you save $3 million regardless of when you cut Foles, so you don't have to worry about pre-June 1st, post-June 1st. Whenever you cut him, it would save you $3 million. His dead cap hit would be over $7 million, but, you know, clearing out $3 mil is still $3 mil. That's, you know, that can be two depth players on your roster. Uh, trading him saves $8.5 million. So, you know, if or $8 million, excuse me. If you could trade Nick Foles, I mean, that, that would be huge. Even if you don't get much, if anything, for him, just to save the $8 million would be a win for this team. I do wonder if they can't trade him, if they'll just keep him as a backup quarterback, and then he'll be a free agent next year. I think that's possible. Uh, but it's an option to cut him to save the $3 million if you just – value uh, that immediate uh, cap relief, which it's possible that Ryan Poles and company do. Uh, what's going to happen with Nick Foles? Type S for stay. He's going to stay and be here next year. Type C for cut. They're going to cut him. Or type T for trade. He's going to get traded. I think really all three scenarios are possible, if I'm being completely honest. S for stay, C for cut, or T for trade. Couple more cut candidates here. Angelo Blackson, the defensive lineman, can play, you know, inside, can play outside. In a 4-3, he's probably a defensive tackle. Uh, here's his cap breakdown. If you cut him uh, before June 1st, 2.1 million in savings. Uh, post June 1st, 2.6. So only an extra 500k. So if they cut him, I would expect him uh, to be pre-June 1st designation there. Uh, I actually like some of the work he did last year, especially he came on strong late in the year. Uh, 43 tackles, two and a half sacks, nine quarterback hits. I thought he improved as the year went on. Uh, you could certainly keep him. He's not going to cost that much against the cap. I think it's like around three million bucks. Uh, so it's not like you have to cut him. But he is a player that can clear out some cap space if you want to go in a different direction. Follow us on Instagram, and by us I mean uh, me at HGramBetFL again. Once we cross 2,500 followers, I will be sure to do another IG live in the near future. So give me a follow. It's at HGramBetFL. Also, IG live or not, more Chicago Bears news, rumors, updates. I have you guys covered over there. So go ahead and follow me on Instagram. All right, one more here. Uh, Cody White here, the offensive guard. Now, uh, to be clear, this would have to be a post June 1st cut. Uh, for Cody Whitehair, because if they cut him before June 1st, you actually lose an extra 200000 in addition to the dead cap that he would bring you, which is like almost $10 million. So that's not going to happen. But he has a post-June 1 cut designation of saving over $8 million. So this could be the example of, hey, you draft your rookie class, uh, but you don't actually pay them. You don't sign them to their contracts until after June 1st. His $8 million clears up cap space. You sign your rookie class. Maybe you have room to sign one or two more free agents that are still uh, unsigned at that point in time. Uh, so I think that could be a possibility. I don't know how this new regime uh, views Cody White here. I thought he did not play well last year overall, especially as a pass blocker. So we'll see how Paul Zebraflus and this regime view him as a player. Uh, certainly a lot of experience, but he's making a lot of money for a guy that, quite frankly, was a below-average starting guard in 2021. Now, name a player the Bears should cut this offseason. We just broke down five for you guys. guys. Maybe it's someone else. Uh, I, I didn't mention Khalil Mack or Robert Quinn because I think you can trade those guys. You're not going to cut them. You don't save enough money by doing so uh, to justify it. So, name a player that you think the Bears should cut this offseason. 